Here's a quick overview and then a graphical or a uh, sign chart example of using the first and second derivative tests. First and second derivative tests for um, relative, also called local, maxima and minima. And I'm going to mention uh, inflection points as well, because it's just, if you've got a sign chart with second derivative, you can find the inflection points as well. So plus inflection points. Okay, so what do we got? If we see uh, the first derivative test, what is that? It's, uh, we're looking at a sign chart for f prime, the first derivative. Hey, that's why it's called the first derivative test. If you see a sign change plus to zero or DNE to minus, then the function is going up and then either a nice hump or a corner or a cusp and then going down. That's going to be a local or relative max. If you see down, flat or corner or cusp or whatever, and then up, it's looking like this, maybe that like maybe with a corner, that's going to be a min. Pretty simple. What if you see the other kinds of possibilities? Let me get the eraser. What if you see plus zero plus? Or a DNE, &E, doesn't matter. Well, then it's going to be something like this an uphill rest. I like to call that an uphill rest. It's not official terminology, hence the quotes. But it's definitely not. It's neither max nor min. Okay? And similarly, a downhill rest minus zero or DNE minus. Like that. Okay, neither net max or min. I would call this a downhill rest. Okay, that's all the possibilities for if you have a DNE or a zero. Those are the that's those are the critical points. If it's a zero, it gets a special name, a stationary point, or critical numbers are often called. I usually call them points. Um, and that's all the possibilities. What what can be on the other on each side? Four possibilities. Two of them. One of them gives you a max. One of them gives you a min. Two of them gives you neither. Okay. What about the second derivative test? This is not as useful in our situations that we typically see, but it becomes really useful later on, and it's really good to know about. So here you actually have some information about the first derivative. You have a zero or DNE, and let's suppose we don't have access to the signs on either side. We may or may not have access, but it's most convincing if for some reason we that's hard to calculate. Well, at this same value of x, then what we do, we don't have to look at on either side. The second derivative test, the claim is, if this is plus, then something interesting is going on. Let's see what that means. Plus, of course, for the second derivative means that it's concave up. Let's say, let's look at the zero case. It's going to be easier to look at that. Um, in fact, come to think of it, if this is DNE, I wasn't thinking, if this is, does not exist, then the second derivative can't exist either. So in fact, this is only going to work when it's a zero. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I remember that. So what we've got is a little flat point, horizontal uh, tangent line. And if it's curving upward, that's what the plus second derivative means. Oh, that's a local min. So this combination means a local min. Okay. Now, it's interesting. That it's, it's really important. The second derivative test, it's still for a relative max or min. Even though the second derivative also has to do with inflection points, the second derivative test is not something specifically about inflection points. It's really still looking for max or min, and it's still crucial that you're using the first derivative to find the candidate, the zero for f prime, the stationary point. But then you look additionally at the second derivative there to see if it's uh, a max or a min. If you have f double prime is minus, then it's going to look like this horizontal and then curving down. And that's going to be a local max. The really unfortunate thing about the second derivative test is that there's some inconclusive cases. 
in the in the first row of the test, there were some cases where you could say definitely it was neither a max or a min. For f for the second derivative test, if I've got 0 and then 0, and I don't know what's going on here, then there's actually lots of possibilities. It could be um, an uphill rest, for example, because that is an inflection point. That changes from second derivative negative to positive, and also it's a 0 for the first derivative because it's got a horizontal tangent. But it also could be, it actually could just be a really, really flat bottom bowl. Turns out, it's not completely intuitive, that like x to the fourth, that has 0 for the first derivative and 0 for the second derivative, right at x equals 0, as it turns out, right at the origin. You can calculate that. It's pretty easy to calculate. And that's annoying. Um, the second derivative is thinking that it's not really curving upward. It's just curving upward so little, and it's so flat at the bottom of the bowl, that the second derivative can't detect it. So the fact is that this just means no info. So you got to watch out for that. If somebody gives you the double zero case, that means I don't really know, if, unless you tell me something else. Of course, if you give me this guy, these two, then we're great, because we can use the first derivative test. OK. That was really quick, but it was supposed to be, because I really am interested in this example. I'm going to give you a sign chart, a somewhat complicated sign chart, for both f prime and f double prime for a function. and Let's say this is x equals 0. Let's say minus 1's right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think it's all for as far as I want to go. 2, 3, 4, 5. And let me show you the sign chart information. Now, to be honest, the really hard part about this story is getting the sign charts, usually, for most people. It's the algebra involved in getting to the sign charts. And it can be a little intense. It's actually really, really good algebra practice, basically. But suppose we've done that work, or somebody did that work for us, or like I did that work for you, which is what's really going on here. And we got this sign chart information about the first and the second derivative. What can we say about where are some critical points, uh, relative max and min, and inflection points while we're at it? OK, so the critical points, or critical numbers, I guess. That's Stewart's terminology. Those are just x equals minus 1. 2, and 5. I didn't choose to put in any DNEs. Those could certainly come into this story, but I didn't put any in here. Okay, Just zeros or DNEs of the first derivative. OK, let's look for relative maxima. So by the first derivative test, we look for up, then flat, then down. Looks like this. And this is a down, flat, down. Ooh, that's going to be a downhill rest, so that's definitely not a max. This is a down, flat, up, so it's not a max. Okay, So this guy's a max. And so that's just going to be x equals minus 1 is the only relative max. Relative min, we look for down, flat, up. The graph is going to look, we can barely read that. It's going to look like a bowl here, like that. Okay, And that's going to be x equals 5. And then this one is a critical point that's a downhill rest. I'm going to sketch a graph of this function at the end. Um, we're getting already a, some sort of picture. It's a hump, downhill rest, then a then a uh, sort of a bowl. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, well, so that's using the first derivative test for for that, and that's really all you need to do to find relative max and min if you've got all that information. But as a as a confirmation or as an alternate way to do it, this was using the first derivative test. So let's use the second derivative test. It's not supposed to give different answers, but let's just see um, if we look here. So we're supposed to take that zero. And we're supposed to see, ah, the second derivative is supposed to be negative everywhere before 1. So 0, negative, that doesn't indicate concave down and horizontal. That's exactly. So we check that x equals minus 1. That's definitely a max. This one, aha, the dreaded 0, 0. If it's a downhill rest, it's got to be a 0, 0. Because if it was a 0 plus or a 0 minus, it would definitely tell us a bowl or, or a, a hump. And so that's the thing. With the downhill rest, we can pretty much be sure it's going to be a 0, 0. So that's a confirmation. Again, if you just knew the 0, 0 information, yay, we don't know what's going on. It could be something, it could be actually a, a secret min or a secret max, but it's actually a downhill rest. And then 0 plus, aha, x equals 5. That's exactly the signature of a bowl of curving upward when it goes through the horizontal. Okay. And then what about inflection points? Inflection points. 
those are going to be sign changes for the, the second derivative. Minus 0 plus. Remember, don't just look for zeros. Look for a sign change. Minus 0 plus. Yep. So we're going to get x equals 1. And plus 0 minus. Yep. x equals 2. And minus 0 plus x equals 4. I happen not to put in any tricky ones where that doesn't actually change sign. But that can happen. OK, so what the heck does this function look like? One of the really neat uses of this is trying to, without a calculator, put all that information together to see what the heck the function looks like. And I probably should have been a, should have tried to do this all with the sign chart still in place. But you can go back in the video and confirm. What we've got is a, a max here, and then a downhill rest here, and then a min. Uh, the min was at 5, right? And the, yeah, and then let's see, here's what it looks like. Here's an inflection point, downhill, or a downhill rest, which is also an inflection point, and then down, and then inflection, and then min, and then up. So here's, ooh, that the maximum didn't come out very well. Maximum's supposed to be at 1. There we go. There's the max, there's the downhill rest, there's the min, and here's the three inflection points. All just delivered coming out of that sign chart for the derivatives.